now. Okay, so welcome students, welcome. Uh, your lives have been exciting over the last couple of weeks. I'm sorry we did not meet last week, but anyway, um, last time we met, uh, we were talking about electrochemistry. And I said we would do two lessons on electrochemistry. Uh, today, today is the second on electrochemistry. So that's where we're going to go. Last time, I'll show you briefly, we looked at this sort of question, finding what anode and cathode and what half reactions were and so on. We had to... Uh, we had to know what the reactivity series of metals was. And we had to do that so we could find out about oxidation and reduction. And we could use things like the uh, cell notation, which was how we write to explain what is what has been set up in uh, in an experiment. So this yes. one here. Is this here? Uh, please mute. Please, please mute whoever it is. Please, thank you. Um, so here we are. This is a this is a cell, and what we said was, it goes from left to right, and therefore in this case, we could say, okay, zinc is more reactive than silver, and therefore zinc will tend, uh, the the zinc will be better at losing electrons, that is what all metals do. So that is better than silver doing the same thing. Silver is not very good at losing electrons. And therefore the zinc will turn into zinc ions and the silver ions would turn into silver. So one goes one direction, this goes in this direction. And this one is forced to go in the opposite direction. Then we said we draw it by saying, hey, the zinc and the zinc ions are in different physical states because this is solid and this is a Q. This is a Q and this is solid. So there was a solid line here and a dotted line here, which is the salt bridge. That's what we said last time. We said that's an important skill to be able to do. Then we came across the uh, electrochemical series and um, what we call E naught values. Um, e naught is always in volts. Whoops, volts. And if you look at the numbers, uh, more positive. means more likely, okay? More likely in the direction that it is written. So if we look at potassium, that is very unlikely, negative 2.92 up here, it will not go in the direction K plus to K. Whereas down at the bottom here with gold, Gold will very likely turn from gold three plus ions into gold itself. So that's what we said last time. We said it would allow us to work out what happens in cells. And it got a bit more complicated. But today is a little bit easier. Well, I think it's a bit easier. Because today is about electrolysis itself. So this is... We're going to call this electrolysis two. Uh, I hope we're going to call it electrolysis two. I'm just going to share my screen. So this is what we're going to do today. Electrolysis two. OK. And <coughs> excuse me. There are two parts to today's lesson. In the first bit, we are going to do the simple bit, which is about trying to say what would be produced in an electrolysis experiment. In the second one, we will use something called Faraday's law, which some of you will know, which is to calculate the
the amount of the products. And if we have time, we will go to industrial uh, electrolysis. So firstly, let's look at predicting products of electrolysis. It's not very difficult if the chemical is just molten. Sometimes they use the word fused, but if the chemical is molten, it is really easy. That's because there's only two ions present, but it's a bit more difficult if it's AQ. So we have to always look, is it going to be, is it, for instance, NaCl liquid, that means molten, or would it be NaCl AQ, which means a solution. So you have to be very careful that you can tell the difference because that, that will tell how easy it is. OK, so here we go. So with molten electrolytes, and that is the word that is used for anything which conducts electricity and is broken down by it. Now, if it's NaCl, the only ions which are there are Na and Cl, and Na is 1 plus, and Cl is Cl minus. So we can only get Na and Cl2. That's all we can get. But we have to be able to write an equation for each one of them. So one of them would be coming up one of the electrodes, and one would come at the other electrode. So Na plus ions are cations. If you remember last time, we said it's, it seems a little bit silly, but if we write it like Ca plus ions, that reminds us that cations are always positive. Now, so cations are attracted to the cathode, which is negative, and there they will pick up electrons. So when they gain electrons, they become atoms. So the ions become atoms. That is what is happening in electrolysis. Here is the equation for sodium. Na plus plus 1 E minus goes to Na. Now, many of you will know that already. That's good. That's nice. Um, that helps. So every time we have a positive ion, it will pick up electrons to become atoms. The chloride is negative, uh, so they are a negative ion, anions. So they will be attracted to the anode, which is positive. When they get there, they are going to drop off their electrons. They are going to lose the electrons, and so they will do this. Because chlorine exists as Cl2, as pairs of atoms joined together, what happens is this. We have two Cl minuses, lose one electron each, that's two electrons, to become chlorine. Now, if this is going a little bit too quickly, don't worry, because we will do some examples in just a moment. OK, but I'm just going to run back over that. So Na positive, Na plus ions are cations. So to get rid of their charge, they have to pick up electrons. So they go to the negative electrode and they gain electrons. And if you remember from last time, that is reduction. So they pick up electrons and they become atoms. So here they are. Na plus plus E minus goes to Na. Whereas the chloride are Cl minus. So they have to lose electrons. To, to form the atoms. But then because chlorine um, exists as a diatomic molecule, that is two atoms in each of the molecules, we have to write an equation which goes like this. 2Cl minus, minus two electrons goes to Cl2. Welcome, Mathari, how nice to see you. So let's have a little bit of a practice. Let's see if you can write some equations. So this is practice for you. What I'd like you to do is to write equations for these to become the atoms or molecules. So I'm going to just remind you. So in the first one, we the one which we've just seen, it was Na. 
Now, because it was positive, it has to pick up the right number of electrons to become the atoms. If it's a negative ion, it has to lose electrons. But remember that chlorine and oxygen go around in pairs. So just have a go now. See if you can write some equations for these, for copper here, for aluminium, for potassium, for chloride and for oxygen to get rid of them. Just see if you can do that. When you think you have an answer, why not uh, come and show me it on, on the screen? Positive ions gain electrons, negative ions, lose electrons. If you think you can write the equation, come and show me. But show me any one of them and it will be good to see. Osharika, that is really good. That is really good. But don't forget how chlorine and oxygen exist in nature. Because the equation must produce, if, it, if something goes around in pairs, it has to produce the pair. So if you think chlorine goes around as Cl2, then your equation must end with Cl2. Silver Spring, you have an idea? You want to show me? Some very clever people in uh, glory today. Silver Spring, St. Michael's. Oops, Silver Spring is just this bit. Ah, hello. Everybody have a go. I'll show you the answers in just a minute. Usharika, whoever showed me that, have you have you sort out sorted out the last two again? Because the last two ended up with atoms and they needed to end up as um, molecules. Hello, Mathari. OK, I'm going to show you so you can mark your own and see how you've got on. So if I've got Cu2+, plus, it has to... Oh, we've got... Sorry, Usharika, show me again. Uh uh, oxygen doesn't pick up electrons. It will have to lose them. And look at the number of electrons uh, for the chlorine, but very close. Right. We've got some very good people at Osharika. Right. Let me show you people. OK. So copper is two plus. If it's two plus, it must pick up electrons. Each electron has one minus charge. So it will have to pick up two. And that will turn it into copper. Aluminium has three pluses. So it will have to pick up three electrons to turn it into aluminium. Potassium only one plus, so plus one E minus. 
goes to potassium. Atoms. You see, these are atoms. Now, chlorine, the chloride, and uh, remember, uh, Cl is chlorine atom. Cl2 is chlorine molecule. And Cl minus is chloride iron okay so try and use look at the difference chlorine chlorine chloride with the iron okay so this has to lose an electron to become cl but because chlorine exists as cl2 i must have cl2 at the end for that i would need to have two cl minus to start with and then they would have to lose two electrons overall. Oxygen would minus two electrons would turn it into O. Ah, but I need O2. So I will need two of those. And this will have to be four, not two. OK. All right, everybody, I hope that I hope that's OK. Just have a look at them again. I'm just going to get rid of them. Uh, here we go. Just going to get rid of them. Everybody have a look. See if you can imagine writing it again yourself. OK, just have a look. I'm just getting rid of them to make you think. You need to think to be able to practice these. I'll show you them in just a minute. OK, so we said this one will be plus 2E minus goes to Cu, plus 3E minus goes to Al, plus 1E minus goes to K. Then we will need two Cl minuses, which will lose 2E minuses to produce Cl2. The oxygen has to end up as O2, and therefore I need two of these, and therefore they will lose 4E minus. Now, this is the same as writing 2O2 minus turns into O2 and four electrons. Just like in maths, we can take something to the other side of the equation. So I can take this to the other side of the equation and it becomes plus 4e minus okay all right let's move on so this is now about uh lead molten lead bromide and i'm just going to show you a little bit of a video in the hope that you can understand what is happening so uh this is uh electrolysis of molten lead bromide just watch don't write anything down just watch i'll just talk you through so when it starts what we have here is a little crucible and we have two electrodes going into it and this is the solid before it's molten then i'll just go back again there's a bunsen underneath heating it up when it's molten it looks like this it, it's a liquid and then the electricity can go through the electrodes when you look carefully, I don't know if you can see, but there is some red brown gas coming off here. Little bits of it. That is bromine. Little bits of brown gas coming off here. It is very toxic. So bromine is being produced. You can see bubbles occasionally down here, but a brown gas. Afterwards, if we clear off all the rest of the things and let it cool down, in the bottom is lead, simply lead, OK? So we started with it as a solid, heated it up, it became a liquid like this. As it electrolyzed, we get a brown gas coming off. And then at the end, if we clear everything else out, we have some lead 
in the bottom. So I'm going to now go through how that happens. Oops, sorry, not that one. OK, so <clears throat> what is happening here is let me see if I can change my color. Hang on. Oops. Just a moment. Sorry. I'm just going to try and make things a bit easier. Ah, right. OK, so the lead. Oh, don't do that. Just stop. Thank you. So the lead is PB2+. And it will pick up two electrons, just like we have just been writing, to form lead. And the bromine, which is Br-, minus, will lose electrons and form bromine. But bromine, just like chlorine, goes around in pairs. So it's Br2. So we will need two Br minus and we will lose two electrons. OK, so that's what's happening there. Now, this is very simple because we have just a molten substance here. OK, it doesn't conduct at all when it's solid, but when it's liquid like this, it will conduct electricity. But what happens when we add water? Well, water changes things. This is the electrolysis of water. And uh, this is a, just another little, very simple experiment. And I'll show you it now. Um, so this is what happens when we electrolyze water. This is high speed. This is showing it producing two gases. What we have is two electrodes here, one here, one here. And we are filling the test tubes with water and covering the electrode so any gases have to go up into the tube then we connect uh, the wires the leads to the uh, to a battery this is going to be negative on the right this is going to be positive on the left and you can see as soon as it is connected gas is produced that's a very interesting way of wearing a tie glory well done but it's better if you concentrate on this. So in the negative electrode, over the negative electrode, we have a lot of little bubbles being produced. And if we speed this up, uh, you will see uh, quite quickly when it's sped up. There we are. The one on the right is producing a lot more gas. Let's just stop it for a minute. Look, that has produced about four and this has only produced about two. And we'll see why in just a minute. So this is electrolyzing water, but pure water does not conduct electricity. So we have to add something to it, like a bit of acid or alkali, and that will help. If we test the products, then the, uh, the gas on the right hand side, which is produced in this case uh, twice as much volume. This is produced 10 down here compared with five over there. The one on the right, um, if we get a splint and we light it and we get the gas and we put it next to it, watch, we'll get a little, oh, there. Did you see that little flame? There's a little flame. Just watch it again. This any gas which actually burns like this with a basically a yellow flame is hydrogen there. Whereas the other one, we have to get a lit splint and blow it out first. OK, so the other gas, we're going to get a splint and light it and let it get it so it is only so here it's lit. We have to blow it out so that it, it is only glowing. And when it is glowing, if we put it into the tube, the gas will help it burn better. So what happens? You will see it just now. There. The glowing splint relights. Look at it again. It is only glowing, no flame. And it goes in and it comes into flame again. OK, so that shows that it is oxygen. So the two chemicals which we have are hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, so hydrogen is H plus 
pick up electron, become H, but H goes around as two, two H plus needs two electrons, okay? Unfortunately, it is more complicated for the negative one. Um, what is produced is oxygen, but it actually forms from an OH minus ion. And what happens is this. Four of them lose four electrons, form oxygen and two waters. But the most important thing is that the water produces hydrogen and oxygen. And we'll see how that works just now. OK, so the electrolysis of water, <coughs> excuse me, produces hydrogen and oxygen. All right. Now, um, if there is water present, so if I start with Na plus Cl minus in water, I also have H plus and OH minus. So the, the ones which are present are H plus and OH minus. Now, this is worth remembering, this bit here. If we have an aqueous solution and we have a cation, that's a metal, which is lower in the reactivity series than hydrogen, then the metal will be produced. Okay, the metal will be produced. If the cation is less than hydrogen, the metal will be produced but otherwise you will get hydrogen, okay? In the anion, if it's chloride, chlorine will be produced, but otherwise it's oxygen. Now, I'm just gonna stop sharing just for a minute. I'm gonna go back to my other uh, program. Come on. Here's the reactivity series for metals. Oops, sorry, it's not sharing, is it? Just a moment. Just a moment. Here. This is the reactivity series of metals. And hydrogen comes in here, just here, between copper and iron. Now, you need to know that. You need to know that hydrogen... I'll just put it in on here. goes in here. OK. Now, so if I have an aqueous solution, which has a metal in it, and it is so it's aqueous, so it is in water, there's a possibility of hydrogen or the metal being produced. If the metal is very unreactive, copper, silver, gold, then the copper, silver or gold will be produced. Otherwise, it will be hydrogen. So sodium chloride, we get hydrogen. Aluminium, we get hydrogen. Magnesium, we get hydrogen. Gold, we get gold. OK. Go back to my other program. So this is worth remembering or writing down. If the cation is, is less reactive than hydrogen, in other words, copper, silver or gold, we would get copper, silver or gold. But if it is more reactive, then we will get hydrogen. And if the anion is chloride, we will get chlorine, but otherwise we will get oxygen. So let's have a look, see if we can predict some. So here are some examples. <laughs> We're going to see if we can predict what's going to happen here. So look at this and concentrate just for a minute, please, everybody, because this is quite important that you can predict what is, is going to be formed. So in this first one, I have NaCl L. Now that means it is molten sodium chloride. So the only chemicals I have here are, oops, sorry, wrong color. Let's see if I can change color. Come on. So the only ions I have here are Na plus and Cl minus. Because of that, the only chemicals that can be produced here are Na and Cl2. 
So if it is liquid, the only things that can be produced are the two halves. But if it, look, look at this second one, NaCl aqueous. So in this one, we have Na plus and Cl minus and H plus and OH minus. Now, the rule said, if the metal sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, then we will get the hydrogen being discharged. For the anion, that's the negative ion, if it's chloride, we will get the chlorine. So it will be that. So what we're expecting is not sodium, we will get hydrogen, and not oxygen, but chlorine. And that's what we get, sodium and chlorine. In this next one, we have, let's just go through it, always try and list them. So in positive ions, I have Cu2+, plus. it's Aq, so I've got H+, plus as well. Those are the two cations. And I have SO4, 2 minus and OH minus. So copper is less reactive than hydrogen. So I would expect the copper to be discharged. Sulfate, well, the anion, it said, if there is chloride, we will expect chlorine, but otherwise we will expect oxygen. So we would hope that we are going to get copper and oxygen. That's what we get, copper and oxygen. This is how we predict what we are going to get. The last one, we have sulfuric acid. So we only have, we have H plus from the sulfuric acid and from the water. And then we have SO42 minus and OH minus. Now we can only get hydrogen but we have no chloride here, so we will get oxygen. So the chemicals we should get here will be hydrogen oxygen. Now have a look at these. Just have a look yourself and see if you can pre predict what you might get. OK, I'm going to help you a little bit because I'm going to tell you what ions we have. So in CuCl2, we have copper ions and hydrogen ions because it's AQ. And we have Cl minus ions and OH minus ions. In zinc chloride, when it's liquid, we will only have zinc ions and Cl minus ions. In lead bromide, when it is liquid, we only have lead ions and bromide ions. When it's HClAQ, we will have H plus from the acid and from the water and Cl minus or OH minus. Remember, OH minus produces oxygen, whereas chloride will produce chlorine. So just have a look, see if you can work out what would be formed in each one of these. I'll give you a few moments so you can try and work out what might be formed. I know some of this is really quite difficult, but it is worth really trying to concentrate because these are examination questions. Um, they quite off, often ask you to pre predict what is produced. What do you think is going to be produced here?
Anybody want to suggest some answers to me? Anybody want to uh, be brave and show me what they have written? Come on, Sir Michael, you can do this. Come on, Mathari. Come on, Ashirika, you were going very well before. Let's see you with a good answer now, huh? Glory, you're looking clever. Let's have it. Can you do it, Silver Spring? Oh, Mathari mix. Let's have a look. Oh, it's gone out of focus. Uh, it's not focusing. The camera is not focusing, Mathari. Just go back a little bit. I think, I think it's because your um, your background is blurred. If you unblur your background. It's on your video, on your on your choice for uh, your camera. I think it is blurring the background like. Um, oh, hang on. If I do mine. Usharika, oh, hold it still. Copper and chlorine, zinc and chlorine, lead and bromine, hydrogen chlorine. Very, very good. Who's that, Ashrika? Put your name on it, please. Well done. Silver Spring, let's have a look. Oh, sorry, hang on. Let, let me make it a bit bigger. Zinc, lead, chlorine. Yes, we need two from each one. So um, hold your paper a little bit further um, to your right, please, because I, I should. most of it was great. Well done, Abira. Very, very good. Silver Spring, hold it up. A little bit closer, please. Hold it still. Uh, Z oh, hold on. Chlorine, lead, bromine. Uh, not quite the right one for the bottom one, but that's very good. Yeah, the lead and bromine and the zinc and chlorine. Very good. Well done. Silver Spring, well done. Who is that, please? Which student? Give him, give me your name. Come on, Sir Michael. Come on. Come on, Glory. Come on, Mafari. Ushirika and Silver Spring are doing really, really well. Uh, I can't see where you've written your name at the moment. Uh, the other way. Send it the other way. Oh, hold, hold still. I can't see properly. The, your, I'm sorry, your camera is not showing me very well. I'm very sorry. Right, because we need to get on. Oh, hang on. Let me have a look. Hold it vertical. I want to see. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll see in a minute. We'll see in a minute. <clears throat> okay. So, whoops, sorry. Hang on. Okay, so uh, mute, please. Thank you. Uh, so in this one here, down at the bottom. So at the bottom we have, uh, here we have uh, at the cathode, because it is a very unreactive metal, we are going to have copper produced, Cu. Because there is, whoops, sorry. Because there is chloride, we expect chlorine. So here we have fluorine or Cl2. In this one here, because it's liquid, there is only zinc and chlorine can be produced. Again, with the lead, we can only get lead and bromine. In the last one, we have H plus only in cation, so this must be hydrogen. And we have chloride, so we will get chlorine, not oxygen. 
Okay, so if you've got those, that's really good. Well done. Very, very good indeed. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so this is uh, part two of today's lesson. This is about uh, Faraday's law. And basically what Faraday's law says is that if you put more electricity in, you get more product out. OK, Faraday, Michael Faraday was an English chemist a very long time ago who did some calculations on how much of uh, a chemical would be produced with a certain amount of electricity. But in simple terms, the more electricity you put in, the more product you get out. Now, this is a very important idea. One mole of electrons can be measured in Faraday. Guys, can, can, we, can we mute, please? Can we mute, please? Your network banding is Yeah, network banding is Okay, look, okay, look, okay, look, okay, look. Mother secondary school, kindly mute. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> we'll go back now. So here we are. Um, here we are. Um, okay, one mole of electrons is 96,500 coulombs. You do not usually have to remember this, but one coulomb is. Remember. Amount of electricity, guys, can we please mute all the time? Thank you. One uh, coulomb is the amount of electricity uh, passed when one amp is produced, uh, sent around for one second. OK, so we can work out the number of Faraday's, sorry, the number of coulombs by multiplying the current by the time in seconds. But what we're going to do first is we're going to just understand what Faraday's are. So if a Faraday is a mole of electrons, let's just look at a couple of examples. So I'm going to just, sorry, I'm just gonna pick this slide. Okay, so if I'm gonna produce a mole of sodium, it would be from sodium ions. So what I have to do is I have to think, okay, is this the right equation for sodium? Yes, it is. So if I was going to produce one mole of this, I would need one mole of this and one mole of this. And that one mole is 96,500 coulombs. And one mole of this, because its ram is 23, would be 23 grams. Let's just go through that again. Let's just make sure that we understand that completely. OK, so I'm just going to go through that again. It's it's very important that everybody understands what I am doing here. So get rid. Remember, when we were doing moles, that a mole is just a number. OK. So in other words, if I start with uh, the idea that I want to produce um, one mole of Na, so I want one mole here, then I will start with one mole of Na+, plus, and I will have to add one mole of electrons. One mole of electrons is one Faraday, which is 96,500 coulombs. Okay? And if I worry about how much this is, well, 
the ram of Na is 23, so one mole is 23 grams. Okay, so 96,500 coulombs will produce 23 grams of sodium. But that wouldn't be true if it was 2 plus or 3 plus or something like that. So we have to be very careful that we count it all properly. So let's go on and see if we can work out how many Faraday's or how many times 96,500 coulombs we need for each one of these. So what you're trying to do is just think, can I write the equation? Because if you can write the equation like this, then you can do it. OK, so here's the next one. What about two moles of Na? Well, if one mole of Na needs one mole of E minus, then two moles would need two. That's two Faraday's. What about a mole of Mg? What is the charge on Mg? Anybody? Hold up, hold up the number of fingers. One, two, three, four. How, what is the charge on Mg ions? Mg, magnesium? Anybody? Anybody just hold up one, two, three, four fingers? What is the charge on Mg? Mg ions. Which group is Mg in the periodic table? No? Okay. Two. It is two. It is two. Magnesium is two. So in other words, Mg with a two plus to produce one mole of Mg would have to pick up two moles of electrons. That's two Faraday's. What about two moles of Al? Well, aluminium is in group three. Because it's in group three, aluminium will be Al3+, plus, so it will have to pick up three electrons to produce Al. Ah, but if I want two of these, then I'd need twice this. In other words, I'd need six. A mole of chlorine... Oh, OK. Well, chlorine starts as Cl minus and loses an electron to form Cl. But Cl is pairs. So it's two here. Ah, so it's two here. So one mole of chlorine needs two moles of electrons. OK. So there it is. So. One mole of sodium needs one Faraday. Two moles of Na will need two. One mole of Mg will need two. Two moles of Al will need six. And one mole of chlorine will need two. OK, so uh, the next question is, how do we calculate Faraday's? Well, we ha have to start by calculating Coulombs here. This is for you. And the example we are going to try to do is what mass of Na? Don't write it down yet because we will come across this again. What mass of Na will be produced if 20 amps is passed for 20 minutes? But first, let's find out about coulombs. So here are some examples. How many coulombs are there in these three? Have a go. See if you can work out the number of coulombs, the number of coulombs in each one of these. It's simple. You need amps times seconds. So just have a go. Amps times seconds for each one of these. See if you can work it out. When you think you have one, just uh, show me it. The first one is the easiest. The, the third one is the most difficult. Do any one of them or all of them up to you. Challenge yourself if you want, but just show me your answer. Who's going to be first? Will it be Usharika? Will it be Glory? Will it be St. Michael? Will it be Kabira? Will it Glory? Who will it be? Come on, somebody come up with an answer. Come on, gold medal. 20 amps for two minutes.
How many coulombs? Who is going to know? Come on, Mafari Mix. You're normally very good. Show me, show me, show me. 2,400. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, the first one, 2,400. Yes, 2,400. Very, very good. The second one go up a bit. No, you can't count. <coughs> Look at the second one again. Is the second one right? Do you think? Do you think? Oh, I don't know. You've got the first one right without any question. Is the second one right? I'm trying to put you off. Uh, Ushirika. Oh, they've done the last one. 108 million. Well done. Well done. <laughs> very, very good. Well done, Ushirika. Well done, Mathari, for getting the gold medal on the first one. What's the second one? Up a bit, please. Just up a bit. Got 90 coulombs and then up a bit. Further up. 108. Uh, there's a zero in the wrong place. One, two, three. Not quite. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Have just have it have another go at the third one, Mathari. Very good. Some people looking a bit confused, so I will show you the first one. So you just need the amps times the seconds. So it will be 20 amps times two minutes times 60 seconds. OK. So in the next one, it will be one and a half times 10 times 60. And the next one, it will be 10,000 times 3 times 60 times 60. Mathari, have you sorted yourself out for number two and three? Check your number two and three. We're going to be doing it in just a minute because we're starting to run out of time a little bit. Okay, so the first one is easy. 20 amps times two minutes times 60 seconds to turn it into seconds. The second one, one and a half times 10 times 60 will be 900, not 90, Mathari. Oh, oh, have you got it right now? <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, and the last one, will be 10,000 times 3 times 60 times 60, which is 108 million or 1.08 times 10 to the 8, which was very, very well done by one particular student. Now, here is our question. What mass of Na will be produced if 20 amps is passed for 20 minutes? OK, so first. First, we work out the coulombs. That's 20 times 20 times 60, which is 24,000 coulombs. 24,000 coulombs. OK, so that's the first thing we do. Then we say, OK, Na is one plus. It picks up one electron. In other words, to produce one mole of Na, we need only one Faraday, one ninety six thousand five hundred. So one mole of Na will need 96,500, but we only have 24,000. So how many moles of Na will we get? Oh, 24,000 over 96,500. That's simple. So we will get 0 0.2487 Faraday's is how many we've got, which is how many moles of sodium we will have. So. We're going to make 0 
that's the moles of electrons and that's the same as the moles of sodium but sodium weighs 23 so it'll produce 5.72 grams that is a hard calculation let's look at it again so the question is what mass of sodium will be produced if 20 amps is passed for 20 minutes so first we work out the coulombs 20 amps 20 minutes 60 seconds 24000 coulombs we look at the equation na plus plus e minus goes to na so in other words one mole of na so therefore one mole of Na needs one mole of electrons, which is 96,500 coulombs. But we have 24,000 coulombs. So what we do is we say, OK, how many Faradays is that? Well, that's how many 96,500s is that? That's 24,000 over 96,500, 0 0.2487. And that will give me the same as the number of sodium. So if Na plus plus E minus goes to Na, and I only have 0 0.2487 here, I will get 0 0.2487 here. Only this weighs 23 times that so it's 5.72 grams this is a very hard calculation let's look at one more and then it will time to stop what mass of zinc will be made if three amps is passed for 50 minutes well zinc first you have to know is that zinc has a charge of Zn2+. plus? So in other words, we need to know that for one mole of zinc, which is 65 grams, I need two moles of electrons, which is two Faradays, which is two times 96,500 coulombs. So... 193,000 will give 65 grams. So let's look at the cat. The, let's look at the answer. Don't bother trying to do it now. Just follow through how we do it. So we work out the coulombs first. It was three amps times 50 minutes times 60 seconds, which is 9,000 coulombs. 9,000 divided by 96,500 is 0 0.093 Faraday's, 0.093 moles of electrons. One mole of zinc will need two moles, two Faraday's overall. But we've only got 0 0.093. So 0 0.093 will produce half as many moles of zinc that's 0 0.0466 times 65 that's the mass of one mole of zinc which is 3.03 .03. now that is really hard so what we will do next time is we will come back to these calculations next time but i hope what you have so far <coughs> is an idea of how this works. So next time, before we do something else, a different topic, I will come back to those calculations and we will continue them next time, just so that we can make sure that we actually understand what is happening. Okay?